on and unlucky day we would see you know i would say like roughly 15 to 20 guys who uh, you know who can improve at some point mm-hmm. i actually also wrote a more official letter to fide it was i think uh, some months after the after the match and i thought okay anyway i should uh, speak about it so not like uh, um, Letting okay, all this situation go. Well, uh, I drink every day, I smoke every day. <laughs> like, should I tell you? I- I'm not sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Greg Mastrider, and today my guest is the legendary Jan Nipomnishi, two time world championship contender, grandmaster, two time winner of the candidates, and many other titles. Hi, Jan. Hi, Greg. I somehow expected this to be kept in Russian, but okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go for the international audience. So let's start off uh, discussing uh, the latest news uh, mm-hmm. from the chess world. We've there are there are quite some quite some news, I guess, yeah. <laughs> we've lately, already, lately. We've already started discussing them before turning on the cameras. Uh, it was just yesterday, as of the date uh, of this recording, that mm-hmm. chess.com banned Kremnik, uh, Kremnik's blog on mm-hmm. their platform. Uh, and you tweeted that uh, mm, the first step to solving the problem is to accept it. What do you mean? Can you elaborate, explain more? And uh, what are the next steps to well, solving the problem? I guess it's quite, uh, I mean, it's quite obvious out of my tweet what, what did I actually mean, yeah? Because I said what you guys, I mean, of course, like Kramnik, a little bit too harsh and doesn't mean it's worse and so on, but uh, still there is a huge problem of cheating and you don't really cope with, cope with, uh, cope with, it, uh, with it, so please just accept the problem and start solving it in some way. Uh, because uh, I'd say I'm, uh, you know, Danny Range, for example, yeah, I know some, some guys from chess.com stuff and uh, yeah, of course, I also discussed for, you know, I wouldn't say numerous times, but quite some times, uh, this problem and, uh, I guess uh, something like one or two weeks ago, we had like a big uh, a big Zoom call uh, with uh, some fair play team members, and um, yeah, we shared let's say our our opinions and everything. But uh, yeah, what I normally hear from uh, from team that okay, the team is working, team is working, team is doing a lot. Okay, you don't see it, but okay, we we, we are doing so 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 much. We have so many parameters, so many stats. Uh, and uh, we are like really advanced and uh, come on, we can't like ban anyone who is being uh, sus out of, let's say, some feelings or uh, suspicions. I mean, okay, they surely have a point. So they, as I understand, they don't want to ban people who could still be innocent. Yeah, like so like uh, being, let's say, tested like false positive for being uh, not so fair. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, that the the size of the problem, yeah, is way bigger than the trying to, you know, the chat that comes in this, uh, it, uh, it actually is, yeah. So how big? Some guys say it's uh, 20, 25 no, percent. hard. I mean, okay, that was one of the points, uh, one of the things we discussed, and uh, okay, my, my opinion is the average quantity of participants, yeah, let's say in the title Tuesday, let's say like 500. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least out of my experience, like I played a couple of Tuesdays, re- a couple of Tuesdays recently, and indeed, like if we say like uh, there is like 50% cheaters in uh, out of 500, which would be like complete nonsense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we speak about, uh, let's say, uh, top 100, so like maybe 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 even top 50, so people who say have realistic chances to fight for you know some prize money, then I guess uh, out of top 50, on an unlucky day we would see. You know, I would say like roughly 15 to 20 guys who, uh, you know, who can improve at some point. Mm-hmm. 15 to 20 guys. I would say out, out of out of 50, out of 100, I, I would have like 15 to 20 percent out of, out of the top 100. But uh, that's not uh, that's not all. That's not everything. I also think that there are like different sort of cheaters. Yeah. So some of them uh, like saying, "All right, I just want to make sure okay, the guy's not cheating against me." Some of them uh, want to, actually they say, like, uh, okay, I just want to get my rating bigger so I can play against stronger opposition. So this reminds me of some other computer games. You are like, 
uh, boost your account for play with top uh, MMR guys. Yeah, like for example in Dota. Mm. Yeah, I think it used Is to be a very. Uh, it used to be a very big problem, so they started just to ban account uh, permanent accounts permanently who were like spotted. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to spot in Dota than in chess. Yeah, I guess the level is t t is tremendously different. So it's like I don't know. Imagine uh, amateur player would start would start playing on free free K mm -hmm. uh, chess.com Elo, and clearly it, he would do it like permanently. Yes, and but it's like it, it, it's a team game. So he's not he's running a game for not only for himself but for uh, for other you know for players. So that's uh, and also he gives like some free rating for uh, for their position. Yeah, so some guys who really want to cheat to get some uh, higher rating. I think this is not such a common story, but maybe it happens as well. And some guys, uh, I mean, especially in some, uh, I mean, some guys just do it for fun, yeah, because okay, they like, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, some trolling other other guys in a way, yeah, or just, you know, just pissing them out and, and so on. But if we speak about uh, Tuesdays and some prize tournaments, I believe there is like a some group of people, maybe it's not, it's not as small as we would uh, expect, uh, who like cheating uh, just, I don't know, for some glory. Mm. So you play against some, I don't know, let's say top GM, and whatever your reason is, you have some students, uh, you're going to show off your game later, and uh, therefore you get, I don't know, like some, uh, you will take some extra, extra bucks for, <laughs> uh, you know, come on, I just recently beat ne Nepo, I beat Nepo, come on, okay. So now it's like not 50 per hour, it's like 75, yeah? Or imagine something like this. But yeah, in my, in my practice, uh, I used to get crushed by some guys, uh, I'd say, and we were not very close to a leading group, and we were both not, not very close to any, any chances for any prizes. So it was so just I guess, for, for yeah. Money. I guess there's like just just for some maybe maybe some glory. Maybe okay, you know, he's collecting some honor. Yeah, you know, collecting a scalp of someone, yeah. and so on. So this is hard to describe, but uh, I mean, for me, it's hard to understand. Yeah, the, the reasoning, but maybe the reasoning is is, is very simple. All right, I'm playing against someone famous. Okay, let's. Also, maybe the guy is like hunting some for some streamers, which uh, I stream not so often, so that's probably not my case. But uh, I think this is. Pretty much the same from many computer games. Uh, but you are, whenever you play against someone recognizable, you try to you know to perform well. Uh, you know, by always you you know you can afford. So if we let's say try to sum it up, yeah, like if we combine all those uh, cheats, maybe we will come to some you know maybe bigger number. But uh, let's say if we speak about people who actually. Mm, compete for the prizes. I would say it shouldn't be no more than like 15 or 20 out of the first 100, but uh, once again, it depends on a lucky day. But it's still so a lot. For, 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 example, for example, out of my personal uh, feeling, uh, especially recently, then Hikaru and Magnus are playing a lot of uh, Tuesdays. Uh, I feel like they have some aura uh, that uh, people don't want to, you know, to push too hard to fight for the first places. They're quite okay with like nine points out of 11, nine and a half perhaps, but no more. Uh, just not to be, you know, too successful. And if we see tournaments um, without these top duo uh, participating, I have a feeling that there is way more, uh, way more attractive for guys to perform really well. Uh, why is that? Uh, is it because uh, the games with uh, Magnus or Hikaru, when you win, uh, get a win over them, uh, you get under too much scrutiny, it's too much risk? Yeah, perhaps it's uh, observed, you know, maybe more uh, more accurately. And also, I, I don't know about Magnus, but uh, I think some, year, some years ago, and maybe like in COVID times or even maybe after, uh, there were like several cases when Hikaru just played some uh, tournament on a stream. He had some... Uh, he played against some very suspicious guy who was crushing everyone. And what's the big difference here? So just, okay, let's say he had his position. I think he was a piece down or something, so he like, completely lost. And then game just ended like 1-0 uh, for Hikaru's favor, because the guy got bent in the middle of the game. Uh, so, but the problem that, let's say, other people's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, other people who mm, play uh, against a potential cheater and lose, they probably they retain their rating. But trading, okay, is pretty much nothing on chess.com, but they never get their points back. 
So it's like you get a free point for playing each other. So in actually, when you're competing for some prizes, and others, okay, they just go to their zeros, and then okay, they play like, and the results cannot be changed. Yeah, that's that's the big difference. And of course, yeah, whenever you play, uh, okay, whenever you just do something, uh, you know, you're having some misbehavior, let's say, yeah, you don't want probably you don't want to draw too much attention. So what to do about that? It's still a lot. You said uh, even if it's like 15-20% out of top 100 in a title Tuesday, mm -hmm. this uh, makes uh, it much less, uh, I don't know, enticing to participate uh, in such a tournament if you are a fair player. If you are not Magnus or Hikaru, whom cheaters uh, are less prone to cheat against. Yeah, that's also, by the way, one of the reasons I started to play it less, because you know, it's uh, it's very strange feeling. So I can't say that I have. I'm having like the least successful years of my career recently. Maybe I have. I started to play a little bit less blitz, but uh, I'm still. I'm. For, I think I'm still quite capable, at least of like dealing with some feedmasters, to put it mildly. Uh, but I'm getting constantly outplayed. So I feel like in, gen in general, I feel like well, I'm I st I'm getting rusty. I started to play like so so poorly, but it's not me alone. Yeah, it's like it applies to many many top players. Okay, let's say like Fabi is a very very nice example. Who, so like, I don't know, like MVL, Feroja. G okay, Giri is not playing often, but and so on and so on. So for example, like to whenever you're entering this event, you like should be like of course you should play well, but you should, you should also be lucky not to step into you know into some trap of uh, playing uh, another like talented feeder master who is who is in good shape in that particular day. Yeah, and. Uh, Alas, this doesn't apply to feeder masters only. You know, there are a bunch of grandmasters who are really performing, I would say, fairly too too good comparing to the you know regular skill level. So there is probably there is uh, not such a sophisticated technique. Yeah, you just try not to. You just try to minimize your blunder. You never hit the first line too often. Uh, but you wait for one or two incredibly bad moves from your opponent, and then you start punishing. And everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, every, I mean this is like in human nature. Yeah, so when you play like chess, and especially when you play blitz, you have to make a lot of silly moves. You have to make a lot of blunders. Uh, but some of those guys, they play, uh, you know, more. Uh, they play sometimes more consistent than uh, others have in, uh, you know, in rapid or OTB. Yeah, so like no. Um, you know, surely they don't like logic. They don't like. Uh, they don't necessarily have some nice tactical vision, yeah? But they don't, like, say, blunder in one. You can argue that, okay, if you don't blunder in one and you're unfocused, yeah, you are, you are focused, uh, but still it doesn't apply to 11 rounds of blitz. So I it's mean, impossible to go without blunder. It's not, like, impossible that this is really... Highly unlikely. But this is, like, whenever this comes to your play style, uh, this is something uh, really different. I mean, okay, you can have a good day once or twice, like this, but this is surely a major part of the game when you speak about like blitz chess. But so, uh, as far as I heard, there are some grandmasters that uh, many other grandmasters suspect are cheating in this way. Uh, uh, so even I heard names, and uh, uh, many people name the same names, but mm -hmm. there is no proof. There is there is also a big problem. Yes, so like uh, maybe in a perfect world. Yeah, I mean, of course, you should be responsible for what you're saying. Yeah, but for example, uh, it's quite uh, quite an easy to foresee the consequences. Uh, so, like, uh, whenever you're like, I mean, even if you're like 100 percent sure, uh, and everyone is sure, uh, the physical evidence is never here. You never have it, uh, so you don't, uh, you know, uh, examine someone's ear and uh, take a headphone out. Yeah, that's not how it works. You have no real, real, real opportunity to, you know, check someone's laptop for, I don't know, some chess bots or, or whatever some people use. Mm, so this is the problem. This is a big problem. And uh, basically, uh, whenever the guy is not dumb enough to, you know, like some people are going to the toilet after each move and checking uh, their smartphones, and then okay, they uh, basically a lot of such cases who got like. Guys who got, like, you know, red-handed. Yeah. Um, well, besides this, uh, there is no realistic way to, you know, to have some some real, really good proof. So I would say, even statistically, yeah, like even statistics, which is uh, 
and known by like the top uh, platforms, including the HS.com. Uh, we would show that, uh, to put it mildly, some players uh, performed um, unreasonably well in uh, some top tier tournaments, uh, like uh, these big, uh, basically big money events, which were held in, uh, I think, COVID times. Of course, platforms are trying, like two cameras set up, you know, screen sharing and so on and so on. But uh, I'm afraid that if guys really into into this topic, uh, this would, you know, maybe bring some inconveniences, but no more. No you more. can use just a micro... Well, I can use whatever I want, I guess, yeah, like, but maybe... Okay, not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but okay, maybe some tiny, tiny headphone or something. But uh, I think there are, like, whenever you, like, Google it, uh, some micro headphone for exams, it, like, I think it costs up to 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And imagine what would you, you know, what would you possibly get if you have, let's say, some tech specialist, uh, or uh, if you're ready to invest, let's say, yeah. So, but this, uh, this, I mean, this is not necessarily, uh, it should be something, you should care too much if you, if you speak about online chess. I think online chess brings you basically any, Mm, you know, all windows are open, yeah, like, mm -hmm. so, all door, I mean, all doors are open, yeah, for, for the guys who want to improve from time to time. What to do? Is it even possible to win in this race against uh, cheaters? New detection methods, uh, maybe some AIs that detect uh, unusual performances? Yeah, I guess, like, new detection methods, they normally, uh, they invent it whenever we say some new, new cheating methods, yeah, like, mm -hmm. So I think it's always uh, one step behind. Uh, but uh, yeah, some AI, some uh, statistical models, yeah, some... Uh, okay, there, there are a lot of different ways, but what I asked uh, Chat.com to do is at least to get some software which should be mandatory installed on your PC when you're playing. Uh, so it should be maybe, it should be some plugin for their, like for the Google or whatever, or just separate pro... Like, it was like, I don't know, like 20 years ago, or whatever, then I used to play some Counter-Strike. It was very, very, you know, everyone was using wall hack, aim hack and everything, yes? So it's like wall hack, you just basically see what ha what's happening, like textures behind the walls. So you like have unlimited vision. Uh, like aim hack is like, even like first or second of your bullets, they uh, direct it automatically into the opponent's head. Mm. So you never miss it. Yeah, and you like basically kill anyone with like first or second uh, click. And uh, it was, uh, on many, on many of these like Counter Strike servers, public servers, you, ha you had to install some special software, which would automatically kick you out if you were using any of this. So at least something, so something which would prevent you from using some specific chess software, yeah, simultaneously with your playing. But that will not solve the problem if uh, somebody's using. Hard well, it would be well, okay. Outside help here, we have like two cam set up. We have some extra uh, extra stuff. Uh, earplugs. Uh, earplugs. Uh, well, this requires some bigger investment than uh, installing some. I don't know, some, some chess bot which would play inside of you and even drag the mouse inside of you and mimic for a, for a human playing, uh, playing the game, yeah. And you're gonna, you, I mean, you, 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 you could also, as far as I understand the thing, yeah, you could also, you know, set the level. So it's not necessarily, I mean, it's pretty much, I, th I think it's enough, you know, to use like the fourth line all the time. Uh, so basically, a human plays against you, you use like the fourth line and you, I mean, okay, you make some obvious moves like recaptures. And it's pretty much enough to, to beat anyone, I guess, especially at Blitz. But um, I mean, there is not such a big difference. Yeah, like, I mean, okay, the first line is, let's say, zero, zero, and the fourth line is like minus zero, 20. Okay, who cares? Then the guy makes some mistakes in return, and then, okay, it's still, yeah, like, and you, you never hit the first line, your accuracy will never be astonishing, and you're good, you're good to go. So the measures that you proposed with uh, those uh, types of software, etc., they will help uh, at least uh, combat the use of such bots. Yeah. And so, but still, it's it's not uh, it's not a universal solution. Yeah, I mean because like uh, the mafia is mortal, yeah. I yeah. see. <laughs> <laughs> but this will at least uh, make it harder for people. Yeah, I've somehow somehow I believe that uh, people use this a lot. So. Mm -hmm. I believe mean, there are some a lot more sophisticated ways, uh, but uh, you know these two cameras set up combined with screen sharing, it shouldn't be delusional. It shouldn't be delusional. Uh, how does it work uh, in terms of reputation in top chess? So 
I hear some names of grandmasters who are top 100 offline, for example, in the world, and whom everybody believes to be an mm -hmm. at least occasional online cheater. Do you like shake hands with them when you meet them? Do you avoid them? Uh, does it hurt their reputation? Because maybe there should be some uh, reputational consequences for this. As far as it's not public, as far as it's not announced, it, it's still on, uh, you know, somewhere at the at the level of the rumors, yeah, and gossips. So I mean, you know that you know that I know, I know that you know that I know, I know that everyone knows that that I know that you know that I know, and so on. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's probably you know like whatever is called uh, it's translated in English like ostracism. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's sounds the same, yeah, like it's a, a Greek word. Maybe maybe that's the way. Uh, but still, you always try, you know, to keep the guy you know for I don't know for many many years. You always keep like a small percentage of maybe it's like some false positive once again. Uh, so, for example, I don't think uh, perhaps Hans uh, is making a lot of new friends, especially among the top players. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it seems like uh, yeah, I think his. I would tell the truth is, I think his reputation really suffered and. Uh, at least, uh, as we all know from the online part uh, of his career, not without a reason, as he confessed yeah. himself. Uh, so this surely doesn't give him like his reputation any like credits. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a problem. So there, like one or two. I mean, I think at, le at least two top players who like two top players who are really under suspicion of, I see, majority of colleague colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, top like top fifty. Top, like top. Like top 20? Uh, I won't specify, but uh, yeah. Very well, uh, very well known names, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh, but once again, it's still, uh, it's better to have uh, some refined statistics by, by platforms. But uh, even when I uh, spoke like, about one of my matches and uh, I said, oh, well, I'm curious, how did this happen? They said, okay, uh, yeah, this is. Uh, uh, this is interesting, as they say, but we don't have something like to confirm. Yeah, so like, no, there is how they say like, there is no like smoking gun. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is a very sensitive topic, I would say. Yeah. So like, this is a big problem. So probably there is pro probably is also very. It would be very wrong, yeah, to uh, you know address some uh, you know questions to any player who beats you. And uh, claim that someone okay is cheating uh, if if he won a game against you, but uh, there are like you know several cases which are like screaming, but uh, the guys keep on playing and uh, other other all doing quite fine, yeah, like uh, even economically, let's say, so keep farming. Yeah, um, many many questions, not <laughs> not enough answers. Yeah, there are always more questions than rather answers, yeah. Yeah, let's discuss not just online cheating, but uh, another scandal that's happening right now. Uh, in particular, in regard uh, with regard to Alireza Ferruja mm -hmm. uh, participating in a tournament organized specifically for him to farm a yeah. rating offline. You wrote in your tweet another tweet that you, yeah. <laughs> you suddenly became active on the socials. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 a, it's a good thing. So okay. um, that FIDE should have done something uh, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. when the story with Dean happened. Yeah. Uh, can you please explain? Well, it's, uh, that's a good question because uh, obviously, I mean, the whole story starting with Karakin getting banned from the tournament was, you know, quite controversial overall and uh, the way they also uh, decided, I mean, the first thing that they banned him actually, yeah, the second thing that they decided to award uh, it to the highest rated player. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, clearly, uh, Chinese Federation, uh, okay, uh, did, I mean, something which is not in, you know, has nothing to do with good sportsmanship, I would say so. Uh, so, if we even check, like, the standings of, the, of those tournaments, uh, this is clear that, uh, I mean, uh, Dink scoring, let's say this was round robin, like four rounds uh, for Alexia. Yeah? So I think scoring three and a half against, against each player and they made all the draws, all the quick draws, if we if we check the games against each other. So uh, I'm not sure if like those games would be actually like played uh, or 
if it was uh, if it was enough effort from the players, to put it mildly. Yeah, and um, of course it was absolutely, um, you know, it looked very bad even back then, like in uh, in, in April and May, and it was uh, discussed a lot in uh, among the top players. And well, as far as you know, there was a letter uh, with uh, a letter to Fide, uh, you know, and it was like a group of top players decided that it was uh, like an official letter, but it was said, okay, we are having a lot of concerns about this. But back then? Yeah, back then, uh, even before the candidates. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the moment those tournaments were announced, announced because, okay, it, it, it actually uh, interact. I mean, it actually prevented, uh, I think it was like a lot of guys having sitting around like 2770 who played all the year long. And then uh, basically it meant that uh, the candidate ambitions were over at that point. So the letter was there, but uh, it was not like an official inquiry or something, uh, investigation, uh, asking for investigation or sort of this. And uh, the letter was never responded like in a way. So, okay, thank you for your concerns. Like uh, this was uh, the response from FIDE. And for me, it was like a big question. Uh, should I like speak up openly about this, uh, like before the tournament or before the candidates, after the candidates or like before the match? And first of all, I wasn't sure if like Magnus will actually agree or not. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, so I, I didn't want to speak about it too much before the candidates because I, mean, okay, I had a lot of stuff to do myself. So it's, uh, how, how to say, it didn't affect me directly in a way. So I was more focused on my preparation. Uh, but when it uh, became uh, obvious that it would probably influence on the World Championship title, yeah, like, so the guy will play. Uh, I had a very, very big, uh, you know, tease to come up with this, but I really thought that the only good way, the only good way to speak up, uh, speak up is like to win the match, mm -hmm. and then okay, just uh, say literally everything, uh, everything I think about this case, because this case I think is like, I mean, yeah, you can argue that okay, any federation would do the same for his player, blah blah blah, but it's like not only using a wormhole uh, into the rules, but it's also like uh, I don't know, I mean, this to me this is just disgusting. This was disgusting, and uh, it's uh, very pitiful to to see um, that some organizer, just some chess organizer from France, uh, did basically the same. Mm -hmm. But some people say it's not the same. They say that Dean already had a huge rate no, I mean, gap. No, he just like needed to gain slightly different situations, but it's like uh, the same basis. Yeah, like so you like some criteria to qualify, and you're getting uh, a tournament organized specifically from for, for you. I mean, we can argue on like where the game played in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in like in a, in a good sport, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, perhaps it was like some some players they didn't do their best, yeah. But uh, you know, in France, uh, it turned into a comedy as uh, Alas uh, Alireza didn't uh, win to zero against Federchuk. So as far as you know, he couldn't even come for the last game, so he had enough rating. But then he came and yeah, he. I think he got a very bad position, but eventually he they agreed for a draw. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but now I think he needs to play another tournament if he wants to. So there are some rumors about some Christmas Open. <laughs> uh, so some Merry, some uh, Merry Christmas is coming yeah, for Ali Rizzi, hopefully, or or I don't know. But uh, the problem is that um, uh, I actually also wrote a more official letter to Fide. It was I think uh, some months after the after the match. So I, you know, I took some time and I thought, okay, anyway, I should uh, speak about it. So not like uh, um, letting okay, all this situation go because it it could, uh, you know, uh, could influence, let's say, on the, on, onto the next cycle. So it it was a good guess, as it seems. So you were not complaining about the past. You were no, 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 about I, the future. I, I, no. I, ju I just said, uh, I just said, all right. I have no questions about the match. Okay, my match was fair, was absolutely fair. But I mean, uh, this should be, uh, you know, evaluated at least. What did they and say? Hopefully investigated, and uh, they didn't say anything for a few months. And uh, I think the letter was somewhat like in June or late June or July, and then I think. Would it be October? They uh, said that okay, uh, like thank you for your letter, blah blah blah. We will like uh, strengthen the rules. Mm -hmm. The rules are so strict right now that uh, we have. Uh, at the same time, we had a tournament in India, which probably was all right. But the problem is this tournament was 
um, uh, organized in two weeks. And it was not, I mean, of course it was made specifically for uh, Indian prodigies to qualify for the candidates. I was just quite understandable. Uh, but uh, it's quite remarkable that uh, there, uh, there is an op option, there is such, such an option to organize an event which becomes uh, a part of uh, the circuit in two weeks. Yeah. And uh, whatever the result is, it's already unfair. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, like, I mean, we can, uh, we can, you know, I can elaborate on like the point system. Yeah, like for example, so uh, these seven rounds, uh, seven rounds round robin brings you as many points as why can't they? For example, like uh, arguably the one of the toughest tournaments in chess. Yeah, and so on. Uh, but I'm not like trying to advocate like Gukish or Anish or someone else. But in general, I feel that this is like very unfair. And in a way, uh, it's also probably as as tricky as uh, hosting uh, some matches against, let's say, veteran players who still have some rating. So I think uh, both is uh, quite, I don't know, like whatever you call it, but for me it, it looks like quite fishy and it looks like, once again, mm, it looks not so, not so great. I, I think the problem is that uh, FIDE didn't interact uh, and it, it, it had to. And, uh, you know, like almost, you know, in April it will be like, uh, uh, an anniversary, like two, 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 two years of those uh, brilliant uh, Chinese tournaments. And uh, so far there is no official evaluation from FIDE, which is like for me like quite questionable. So I think uh, it's one of the duties the Chess Federation has uh, to observe like everything is fair. They made some statement that they reserve for themselves the right to not uh, uh, count some tournaments that they don't mm -hmm. like. But this is also not ideal, I think. No, this is like uh, why would why would you like this this or that one, and why wouldn't yeah. you like another one? No predictability. I mean, uh, then the same question: Why would you like and uh, gain, you know give all the um, all the tour points to let's say the tournament which uh, appeared like uh, I don't know. I think they actually decided to host this tournament when it was clear that London is not going well for Gukish. Mm. And I think you, at least uh, if we like have like two weeks, uh, then probably it works like this. Yeah. So like, if we like have whatever like first December like plus fourteen days, uh, then we get what we get. Yeah. Like uh, in result. I mean, okay, it's, it's good that in the host time some super tournament. It's it's brilliant that okay prodigies won, but it's, why should it be like a, a part of like circuit? I mean, for me, it's especially okay if it would be announced like half a year in prior, uh, at least like a few months. But this is clearly tournament which, which were hosted with only one goal and uh, for the you know for the big joy of uh, Indian organizers the, 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 this goal was achieved but the, uh, the, they said that it was in the works for many months blah, the, blah, the Chennai. Blah. yeah many months mm -hmm. uh, many years okay many years right after Olympiad yeah uh, probably uh, they wanted to like cause it after Olympiad but then okay it took like some time yeah, you know so you think there should be some limits on uh, how many yeah, there should be, advance? There should be rules. There should be rules. I mean, but there are no rules. Basically, this is a big, uh, big mess with everything. With the rating spot, uh, with the rating slot, it's a big mess. With tour points, uh, it's also, I guess, yeah, like so. The, I mean, what ha what's happening with the rating is sort of inevitable uh, because uh, when we make it like one month, uh, you know, only you know. So like first January of uh, 2024, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, basically, you can uh, have a very fruitful December and that's it. Mm -hmm. So you play it a little bit here and there during the year. And then you just, uh, you know, have a massive leap in your rating. So for example, like Ferruja, I mean, in, 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 in some way, uh, we should like even like feel sorry for him because he had like 27, 70 plus. And then he had a hor horrendous November, I guess. So he played quite quite poorly to his standards and to his rating standards in, in Isle of Man and then uh, in the Singled Cup. So I think he lost like 25 or 30 uh, LO points. Mm. And this is understandable, yeah, like so. But uh, of course, the way he's trying to get his points back, yeah, is, yeah, it looks not so great. Yeah, let's hope FIDE sorts this uh, mess out for future, at least, cycles. Um, let's talk about the candidates that's mm. on the horizon already. Uh, so we've talked about how people uh, try to become uh, part of the candidates. Uh, what would your dream lineup for the candidates be? Not in terms of uh, who is easier to beat, but in terms of uh, who is the most interesting player um, to compete with. 
I'd say I'm more uh, focused on the result rather than the interest. So yeah, I think uh, it's a question I I can't think uh, about like for too long or being too serious. I mean, indeed, uh, uh, those who qualified already are, you know, did it like so they like fully belong. Uh, I'm still sort of puzzled with uh, like Magnus' decision. So which probably like top four of the World Cup is also such a such a good player. But uh, um, yeah, seeing uh, like Jata Basov as a possible replacement to Magnus. Uh, I mean, he's, I think, slightly lower rated than we used to see. So I think before, I think it was Alexeyenko who got a wild card for after finishing uh, really high uh, in the um, Grand, uh, Grand Swiss. But I think he has something like 2700 back then. So the judge is like 2650. So this is hard to predict what would he do. Like, would he be as brilliant as uh, on his, uh, you know, home pitch? Or uh, maybe he will... Uh, it would be more challenging for him, let's see. Uh, yeah, and uh, as for now, it seems like we're going to have like three Indian players, at least. So, yeah, it's very, very interesting. So many, many new names. But once again, yeah, it's, it's, it's only interesting when you play well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, obviously, your goal is to, to win it the third time in a row. Uh, how do you evaluate your chances? Uh, not, you know, like they speak a lot about statistics right now and probabilities. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's uh, these events are correlate with each other in some way. Of course, they have some experience, but this is like the only difference. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think my chances are lower than before, but I also don't think they're like surprisingly high. Uh, no, not really. But uh, it's it's all, you know. There is not some not so much time you know left to wait. So you know, in, in a few months, I guess we will find out. Who is the favorite? No, oh, normally the, 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 the rating favorite is one of the favorites. So I think, of course, Fabiano is uh, having a brilliant year. Uh, but uh, well, there is still some time. So maybe maybe he loses some of his uh, you know, he his shape becomes slightly slightly more slightly less sharp, let's say. But uh, yeah, surely he's. Really, really good. Magnus and many other top players told me that they believe, uh, well, Magnus told not me, but other yeah. interviewers, uh, told uh, people that they believe that Fabi is a uh, number two chess player in the world by skill after Magnus. Mm. Uh, would you agree with that? Or would you uh, consider yourself to be higher than him? Well, it's hard to say what, what, what does it mean, like skill in chess? Uh, because there are like so many components, uh, so let's say if we see, like, take Hikari as an example. Of course, he's uh, very talented and a great chess player. But uh, I was like pretty sure like his best times are say uh, a little bit, uh, you know, in the past. So I think like in 2015 he had 28 plus mm -hmm. rating, which is yeah, really a lot. And lately. It looked like he gave up on like professional chess. He began began his streamer career, yeah, which is tremendously successful. And uh, what he does as a streamer is probably something which contradicts all I know about like improving in chess. Uh, but still, uh, he's in between like top two and top three. Yeah, recently, yeah, so at some point he was like top top two in the in the life ratings. So this was uh, quite surprising. So, but uh, would you like think that he's like? Overall, chess skill is better than, let's say, I don't know, like say Dinks or mine or someone else. Yeah, I think it's not. Uh, I wouldn't take it for granted. So, of course, uh, Fabi is very strong, but uh, in my opinion, there is like very, very small gap if it really exists in between, like let's say, top five or top ten players. Mm, especially if uh, you know, if the player is like, like is like in, in, in a hot and good form. I think if there is. No big difference. It's sometimes the matter of luck. If you're if you're lucky with the opening or not, if you let's say uh, calm enough uh, and you not know, tilting after some inaccurate move or a bad game or not, and so on. So there are like very there is a lot of different components. How would you compare your uh, strengths and uh, those of uh, Hikaru and Fabiano? You all have your own probably st strongest uh, fortes, uh, isn't it so? I'm not sure. So Fabiano said to Bjorki, looks like he's uh, very, 
you know, very hard working uh, on, on and off the board. So his, uh, his calculating skills are like, well known. Um, I think this is maybe his main, uh, main benefit and also, you know, uh, lately he also started playing really well some faster time controls, so, which indicates his intuition also, you know, got to the level of his other just strengths, yeah, so this is quite important. Speaking of Hikaru, I think he's a very good positional player and he has very nice intuition as well. And he's a good defender. Uh, so like he's not giving up in any positions. Mm, yeah, but uh, once again, I, I'm not sure how much does he work at chess right now, but uh, I guess yeah, his openings also is always very, very solid and you know, really hard to break. Okay, as for me, I have no strengths, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come but sometimes, yeah, sometimes I can play well. Uh, how would you describe your playing style? Okay, that is. I think this question was there already. Like when we had a podcast, some, I think, some time ago, a year ago or something. In Russian, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, well, I'm trying to adapt, you know, to some some of my opponents. But uh, overall, I think I have like little bit of little bit of this, little bit of that, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to use it when it matters. By the way, I didn't ask you uh, then. Okay. Um, uh, those of you who are interested, do check out uh, that podcast. It has English subtitles, by the way. The link is in the description. But I didn't ask you then, um, whose style uh, uh, would, you, uh, would you consider yourself closest to in terms of uh, the greats of the past? That's a very tough question. I know that it was quite quite funny interview one day. Uh, I think uh, Evgeny Alexeyev, who used to be like Russian champion, and very, very strong chess player, so lately he's, I mean, he's like, not so young anymore, but uh, yeah, I think at his peak he was around like 27, 50, around top 10. And he got very, uh, I think he got overexcited with his results, and when he was interviewed, like, whom you would uh, compare yourself with out of the great players of the past, he said like, all right, like in between Kasparov or Capablanca, <laughs> and so on. And this, yeah, this was like uh, one of my favorite interviews of all time. Yes, yeah, so, okay. I mean, the, I mean, the whole text is priceless, but maybe this, uh, this moment is something which being quoted the most, uh, yeah, in, in some inner circle of Russian players. Mm, uh, so I don't really try to compare. So I, I don't know, I think he, every chess player is unique. So for example, uh, I mean, there is like surely some uh, strong traits of your style, and non, and you know, and, and not so. So, some players are more intuitive, some are more relying on the calculation. You are some are materialistic, some are not. So, and you, a little bit, a little bit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of this. But bit who of inspires that. you most, uh, Kasparov? I'm pretending that I'm trying to learn from from uh, from anyone. So, uh, I think. For example, one of the good ideas uh, I used uh, in the match, for example, against Ding uh, and, you know, Drew with Black without big problems, uh, is actually from my title Tuesday game, but I was white against some guy who just outplayed me totally in the opening. And wow, I thought, wow, this is so smart. And they played it, uh, you know, a few years after. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it's... It's quite realistic to learn and to you know fish out something from nearly every of every game, yeah. So, and uh, let's say as Magnus' example shows, uh, it's not necessary to be like absolutely brilliant in uh, some particular aspect. You should be, you should you should just be very consistent, very very good uh, in in most of these uh, things, yeah. So, for example, a little like later. Lately, Magnus became lazy and he doesn't want to calculate too much. But this is still uh, would hardly overshadow like all of his uh, other like strengths. So, like brilliant engine player, brilliant positional player. Um, so he's ready. He's you know very. He has very nice stamina. Yeah, he, he's ready to work for work at the board for hours. So he's not giving up on after some mistakes. Yeah, and so on. And uh, we can also like discuss in the same way like, most of the top players. So I guess it's hard. It's, it's hard to compare. It just became different. It just became different. So, in uh, what way uh, does the difference uh, feel uh, most uh, strongly? No, like the, the, you know, the, you know the, first of all, the knowledge. The knowledge is different. So, with 
something which uh, would be considered as a theory about chess, like, okay, maybe maybe this is right, maybe this is wrong. Now it's sort of like a known fact, yeah, it's like a basis. And uh, everyone, like, uh, you know, in terms of Stein, it's, yeah, like, King should protect himself, yeah, or something was some, uh, uh, some new bright idea from uh, from the first world champion, but now, yeah, it's, it's proof that there is some, you know, some proof that probably, probably you shouldn't be too relying too much on that on on this aspect unless you play the bone cloud uh, no i guess it's uh, a lot of surprisingly in the bone cloud there are a lot of pieces and pawns around the king so mm. it, it 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 only hurts it only hurts your development but it, i think overall the king's safety is mm. sort of the, on the acceptable level <laughs> You said that Magnus is willing to work a lot, uh, stamina, etc. What about you? How much uh, time do you, do you dedicate to improving in chess as of now? Well, uh, I think this year I finally had a break. So, for example, in October I had like uh, one month uh, without like any chess, mm. even not playing online. And then, uh, you know, it's. I would say I spent some nice time, but uh, also when I came to St. Louis to Rapid and Blitz, first day was horrendous. Like I couldn't, I could, I was trying to remember how to do how to do this, how to play chess. So that's how I uh, felt even you know more uh, respect towards Gary, who is uh, trying to play once a year, which would be to so some of his like results, which are not so shiny, uh, became even less surprising for me. I mean, of course, like I ended up like in plus or something, or like at least like 50% in, in rapid part, but yeah, I mean, it's it's like physically hard to to make yourself like work as you should work during the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, besides this, yeah, I'm, I had to return to some normal routine and yeah, surely I, I wouldn't have any, you know, too much of the free time in the upcoming months, I think. Uh -huh. Because of the candidates preparation. Yeah, yeah. So what did you do when you had your free time? Did you travel? Uh, no, not really. I think uh, I enjoyed staying at home. There was some the international, so I followed the international. Dota? Uh, yeah, Dota. Even made some commentary uh, to feed up my, no my nostalgia for uh, some, uh, whatever it was, like 10 or 15 years ago. Mm, followed a lot of sports, like whatever, like Champions League, uh, like hit the gym a little for, for, for October at least. So there is a lot of things uh, to do, you know, besides chess, but uh, yeah. Of course, I followed some tournaments, but uh, I, you know, the important thing that was, uh, you know, I did that I didn't play. Mm -hmm. so one month break. Yeah. Technically, it was even more because I thought, you know, that at some point, uh, late September, I played the Levitov tournament yeah, uh, in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. Yeah. And it was, let's say, Levitov tournament was in the first half of the day, and then okay, I came back to my room. And had like another like five rapid games uh, in the Champions Chess Tour. Yeah, against Magnus. And eight <laughs> rounds, uh, eight rounds a day, nine rounds a day. I felt like okay, this is too much. <laughs> it's a little bit too much. I have to have to stop at some point uh, to to exhale, to have a break. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, how many hours per day are you working? I'm not like counting. So this is probably not my cup of tea. So whenever I I, I, I see some interview, like the guy is claiming, okay, I'm work like eight hours every day. Uh, there is always a chance that he says what he says is true. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it's very hard to imagine. So whenever I'm like a training session, of course, I work a lot. Whenever I'm at home, I'm, I think it's not, uh, it, 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 that's not as much. Uh, so normally uh, I work a lot during the trainings and during uh, the tournaments indeed. Yeah, so tournaments is like the toughest part, I guess. So besides like uh, the game, you also have like three or four hours. Daily to uh, you know to check the game. Uh, okay, this is not so important, but also like to prepare for the next one. Uh, but uh, yeah, eight hours a day. Uh, whenever I'm just at home, this is unrealistic. <laughs> um, what uh, exactly do you do when you work at chess? What it is uh, mostly uh, openings or uh, puzzles? Uh, how oh, is your time divided? Once again, it's uh, I think it's balanced. So. Due to the current situation, you have to focus on openings, like first and foremost. Uh, but uh, also, like it's their big part is memorizing. But also, besides memorizing, you have to understand what you are doing. So, uh, I think you will be you will burn out quite quickly if you repeat your lines like every day for five hours. So, for example, I think uh, Kramnik, one of the last players uh, who at least claimed he did this like every day. 
Mm. So it was like, okay, like I wake up to have like 11 and uh, I have my game at three and I have like four hours of repeating lines. Wow. Uh, that's what he said, but okay, well, of course, like uh, in the last years of his career, like active career as an active chess player, I don't think he uh, was actually following this ritual, but uh, yeah, I think at some point he did this. Uh, but uh, yeah, you should like, get into your, let's say, your material. You probably have to dig for something new to have any surprises. Yeah, hopefully nasty surprises for your opponents. But any surprises would be also good. So also, when it comes closer to a tournament, you switch a little bit to the um, tactics, uh, to puzzles, to training games, uh, some rapid or blitz. So this is... It's hard to imagine like if you're like being focused on someone uh, on some particular uh, uh, aspect. A little bit of everything again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh, what you do physically to prepare. You are in great shape uh, and uh, not, which sport? Not as great as I would like to, but uh, yeah. Well, uh, I drink every day, I smoke every <laughs> day. Like, what else can I do? No, and normally you just try to hit the gym, a little bit of gym, a lot. A lot of cardio, different cardio, like swimming, mm -hmm. swimming, I don't know, like uh, some uh, cardio in the, like running and something, yeah. Any special diet? Um, no, not really, just uh, don't try to... Okay, I changed something comparing to the match, but I, I wouldn't say what. Mm, yeah, but uh, also trying to sort of have uh, some schedule of, you know, of eating. Uh, a little bit, uh, I don't know even, I don't even know what else. Yeah, so, well, I, I have changed like a few things comparing to what I did before, but it's like too early to say if it's like, uh, goes to, you know, to better side. So, uh, for, you know, wherever we, it, it will lead me, it's still, still unclear. Okay, we will see. And lastly, I wanted to ask about your psychological preparation mm -hmm. because you said on numerous occasions and even mm -hmm. on the podcast uh, uh, on my Russian channel mm -hmm. that uh, it's uh, an area that you need to work on, that uh, you can get tilted, for example, and nervous. And you mentioned on mm -hmm. The Guardian, I think, interview that you had problems sleeping uh, mm -hmm. during the match with Dean. Uh, so probably you, uh, you, you consider this uh, a problem? Have you done anything about it? Or maybe sports psychologist or something like that? Well, I'm, uh, what can I say, I'm working. <laughs> I'm working on this topic as well. Uh, but uh, also, I mean, there is, uh, there is difficult, I mean, it's really difficult to determine if it's like more like psychological reasons or it's like physical reasons. Why, why don't you sleep too, much, uh, too well? Yeah, so probably it's, uh, it's always like the physical aspect is always there, so you shouldn't. Uh, so it's a mix of once again. Once again, as I said, like I don't like. It's, it's not like I don't trust in psychology. Uh, I mean, but I think that, that people, uh, you know, they you, normally they use this word to explain something which is hard to explain. All right, this is like hmm. okay, that's clear. This is psychology. Okay, I don't know why this is happening. So this is happening because of some psychological reasons. So this is like an euphemism for uh, for some things which are hard to explain. Uh, but do you have a sports psychologist or a ordinary should psychologist? Should I tell you? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what I should tell you, but okay, I'm working on different aspects once again. Uh -huh. Well, it's very interesting. I uh, wish you good luck in Samarkand in World Thank Rapid you. and Blitz that begins uh, just tomorrow. Um, and uh, in the candidates, hope to speak to you again on another podcast after you win it. Thank you. I'll try, <laughs> try my best. Guys, do leave your comments uh, in the comment section. Whom do you want me to invite? And what would you like to, me to ask uh, Jan next time he comes on the podcast, hopefully? And subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.